Um, now, what, what would you, what's the advice then you would say to other musicians? You know, they're not the rock star. They're not you 2 They're not Bono. By the way, you look a bit Bono-ish with your glasses on today. Here, right? <laughs> but, but, you know, they're, they're not the rock star. They're not filling stadiums. You know, they, they're, they're kind of that grassroots up. Mm -hmm. What's the practical advice that you would say to them yes. to actually potentially make their way of turning this hobby and passion into an income mm. rather than merely lifestyle? Because it's, you know, it's the old adage of the artist's journey is one of the toughest journeys, right? The poor artist is yes. this kind of idea of thinking. So how, how, what's some practical things they can then do? maybe using the technology to actually then start turning that and, and making some money in their craft as well? Yeah, that's a great question. And I get to say that all of us understand we have a left and right brain. We have a creative element in our right brain and we have more of the technical aspect in our left brain. So the solution I feel, a little Jedi trick, is to have it where you get to be creative, you get to be artistic, you get to be in that flow state, but you also get to have a sign somewhere in your studio, in your house, on your phone that says, I love structure, right? I love systems, I love organization, because timelines are just timelines unless you have three steps is what I say. You plan, you take action, persist plan, take action, persist. That's my philosophy around all of this. And there's this whole idea called super fans, where a lot of artists are tapping into this hack for, as you said, besides being a starving artist, I mean, we all want to eat, come on. <laughs> and really what it's about is having a thousand people contribute a hundred dollars annual towards your craft, whether that be merchandise, downloads, a streaming system, um, let's say you have a membership website that you're doing live streaming concerts, or for me, I do mentorship programs where I get a, a stream of revenue that way. And if you can get a thousand people to contribute that amount, then you're at six figures. And most artists would have a transformational, transcendent experience of life to have that level of abundance. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think we can flip the script and move into that. And you know, my background, Mark, is a school teacher, yes. and I'm not sure in your country, but I know certain countries, you know, actually reward with value. In Norway, they pay their teachers like they pay their doctors and lawyers. So they have one of the best education systems in the world that's revered and admired. Where in other countries, um, happen to be in United States, where there's a lot of teachers like myself that have been doing side hustles and gigs. And, and that's really how my brand of DTO evolved is, I was a school teacher. And I was like, wait, I want to actually pay my bills and I can't do that on my salary alone. So then I started to tap into my passion, my creativity. So a lot of people that are watching this, I imagine are artists, musicians that have had that yearning within their soul. They're feeling the possibilities, but then they have a jobby job and they're like, ah, oh, but I have to make this and, you know, get the, the money, the green coupons. And that's the old paradigm, but you can still have one foot in your dreams and pursue those and move forward with that. And so that's what I say to everyone as well. Like, the word routine actually is derived um, from route, your pathway. So if your pathway is to be self-expressed and musical and creative, then have a routine. Some people hear the word routine and they get triggered like, oh, I want a routine. That's too robotic. I'm not a robot. I want to have flow and spontaneity. Yeah, but dreams are just dreams unless you have timelines. So that's why I advised everyone is have a little bit of energy that you put into it little by little and simply have people in your family, your friends, play a few songs for them that you're creating. And you might have a light bulb moment where they're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. How can I support you? I'll run your Instagram. I'll do this. I'll, I'll write, you know, you might get people that are on your team that would support you. A lot of people, they don't request support from anyone. So that's my advice to everyone. Ask I people love, around. I love that. A couple of like, what I'm hearing loud and clear, and I know we'd spoken about this in a, in a previous conversation, right, was that structure piece, mm. especially where you are working in that creative flow where structure is maybe not natural, finding ways to have structure, even if that means getting other people to help you. Because yeah, or waking up a half hour early every day and say, okay, for this half hour, I'm going to work on my marketing plan, my business plan, nice. whatever it is, you know, put make those it happen. Routines, put those blocks of time in to those structural parts. And the business model though, I think it's, it's an interesting one is, identifying and ramping up to those super fans, as you call them, where you can create um, a not over the top 
priced item that's supporting your work that is almost mm -hmm. like that subscription type model really that a lot of people are moving to. 